The Born to Win podcast highlights individuals excelling at high levels in their purpose and calling. This podcast is for anyone looking to get ahead in life and willing to take action and reach their full potential. Using Champ's male mentoring model of the three E's, education, empowerment, and exposure, it means you too are born to win. The Jets from Chicago be screaming all in. You are now tuned in to the Born to Win podcast. Champion. To another Born to Win podcast. And listen, we want to impact not just the world, but our communities, our families, our homes, our relationships, our jobs. And we have a very, very special guest. I'm going to bring this brother in. But before I bring uh, Sam Binion in, I want to tell you uh, just a little bit about how I met him. When I came back home to Chicago, I was working at Gary Comer College Prep. And one of the first people that I had the opportunity to meet was Sam Binion. That's right, the mayor of Pocket Town. Um, and Sam Binion had a reputation within that community as working across the table with so many different people. And I'm just really privileged that he's going to be joining us to tell us about Operation Neighborhood Safety, all of the wonderful things that they're doing in the community. And then we'll talk a little bit about some future plans that we have coming up. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on my good brother. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singleton. Thank you for the uh, intro. Thank you for the uh, introduction. I really appreciate it, man. Yeah, really appreciate it. A absolutely uh, sam so for those of uh our audience uh you know that may be in africa listening right now or in europe listening right now can you just tell everybody who you are a little bit about your story okay all right thank you again well i mean you you summed it up uh, again you know uh sam Binion started out doing basketball youth basketball tournaments uh adult basketball tournaments um had quite a few mentors over there that that was really really popular some you know a couple of police officers that was, I, I was really involved with that that really got me started into this community thing um right now i'm going into over 30 years of in, of community involvement long time dedication every every year never missed a year you know of, of doing activities in the community listen man um for those who may not understand what Sam just mentioned, uh, notice what he just said, right? Pay attention to what he's saying. Like over 30 years and still involved with the community. You know, a lot of people do one event for a whole year and they think they did something. <laughs> um, but right. when you boots on the ground, sometimes even if you want to pull away from the work, the work pulls you back in. And yeah. I've seen like this time and time and time again happen with you where it's like man i'm over here for a little bit but then something will get you back on the ground get you activated and you really never get a chance to leave this type of work and you really commit it until you die and i yeah. tell people all the time you know you know champs in terms of what we do you know with mentorship you just can't come in somebody's life and leave their life with mentorship you got to die doing this like this is how serious it is for us so if you can just talk a little bit about operation neighborhood safety um tell us how this came about and then tell us like hey man what's some things that we can you know know about to help kind of support this great work and great mission okay i'm gonna lead back into that but you know what you you, you just you just reminded me of something here Mondale. um you know, again, my, my dedication to community, my dedication to, to home is, is very important. And, and me and you always discuss consistency is key, no matter what. Consistency is key. And you, you when you're consistent, you get things done, you know, on a consistent basis. Um, you know, I've, I've grown up in that community. Like I said earlier, I've grown up in that community, done a lot of things over in that community. But then it kind of worn out and I end up moving. I got married and moved out uh, years ago. So, um, oh, you know, just um, and a few years ago, you know, me and my wife had separated, divorced. But I moved to Portage, Valparaiso, Indiana, and uh, was, was staying out there for years. But still, coming back to Pocket Town, every single day working a full-time job coming back every single day to this community because i know this community needed that help i know they needed that boost 
They needed that energy. They needed right. that jump, you know, to help keep keep things, uh, you know, at a, at a decent level over in there. The area again was a ten block radius, and it's basically all homeowners over there. And right. and you know, I, I've grown up with most of the, the 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 people that were older than me. I grew up with their parents. There was Beacons in the neighborhood, Miss Leach, you know, uh, Miss Dillon, Miss Johnson, you know, Willie Jones, uh, you know, all of these people. These people were were people that were involved in the community and went through a lot. So uh, Miss Leach's son, Brian Brian Leach, got me involved. Uh, officer Jennifer Maddox uh, got me involved as the police officer and pulled me in. And her and Officer Hutchinson, you know, he's retired right now, but. These, these when, when cops are good out on the street, we have tons and tons of good cops out here. So, right. you know, we go across the city even now to this day, you know, with, with our people uh, not looking at some of these officers in a good way. You know, we're seeing different than what they are. And believe us, you know, talk with us and, and walk with us. And we're out there and, you know, which leads up to the Operation Neighborhood Safety. You know, there was a... Uh, a, a surge in uh, carjacking uh, last year, as we may remember, during around the December time again, like now, during the uh, holiday time, where uh, there was a lot of carjacking. And uh, we felt that it was our due diligence to get out, you know, as fathers, men, grandpas, uncles, you know, sons, you know, men, let's get out and stand up in our community, you know, for our women, for our children, for our community, for for the great cause of, you know, having a decent decent community, and so it it started out. We you know, uh, me and a few guys, uh, Mr. Matthew Brandon, uh, Mr. Willie Jones, uh, uh, Josh Smith, Jennifer Edwards, June. You know, we we went out to a couple of gas stations, set up our speakers, and um, it was cold because it was it was January. January 5th, as to what's that, uh, last January. And uh, we went, to, you know, to a couple of gas stations and stood up. So more people started coming on. Um, Chicago Playground Legends, uh, South No South Vocals, Brookhaven, right. Cal Community Organized to Win. Uh, of course, I'm already with Champs. You know, we was That's already right. out there. Right. Representing, you know, big time. So, yeah, so we started from there and Till this day, you know, um, Operation Neighborhood Safety is comprised of uh, now 15 different organizations. And Op Operation Neighborhood Safety is the umbrella organization and carry all of these organizations on, under it. You know, as we speak right now, we work, you know, working on, you know, through our last uh, parts of setting this up. But you better believe we coming strong. We grassroots. Nobody's paying us out here. We, we use our own funding for whatever we do out here. Again, to help make these communities safe. We travel uh, through different uh, parts of the community. Right now, we're working in third district. We are partnershiping with sixth district, seventh district, and fourth district that also can use these services. And, and just last week, uh, Commander Ben from the sixth district, you know, uh, came to our together we can um, meeting. And she's now wanting to be involved, you know, with that. So we're going to start doing gas stations over in the 6th District area. So very, very proud to do it. Um, I, we feel it's our due diligence to do it, to get out there and keep our community safe. You know, who going to do it besides us? Police can't do it. Right. They got a job to do eight hours a day or whenever. They got a family to go back to. We have to live this. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the dedication. We have to live these, these things. And if we don't, who going to do it? waiting on your local government to do it keep on waiting right right no it's definitely admirable uh just recently had like the first board meeting which i had the opportunity to sit in um what do you feel like in terms of the direction operation neighborhood safety is going from a board perspective from an organizational perspective and why do you think that's important to help collaborate and build alliances across greater grand crossing area and other surrounding areas i think i think it's very viable again you know being an umbrella organization to be to to snowball and and have that one voice to speak you know and of course between all 15 of these organizations that that's involved here 
we all still serve the same purpose. We all still, you know, going through the same thing. So that collaboration, you know, is very, very important. That partnership is very, very important. That dedication. All 15 of those organizations that's with us has been with us since January. You want to know how key that is? It ain't nobody that we picking up, you know, and, and they going about. We want to make sure that building this organization, the structure that we have there, we got dedicated people. If you're not going to be part of this, you're not going to be 100 in this, we don't we don't need that. You know, that, that don't help our community none. So I think it's, you know, to, to build that, that that structure, you know, is, is very solid, a very solid structure. I'd like to let you know. All right. All right, and you were saying, what were you saying? About the importance of the structure of the organization. Just talking a little bit about, you know, the, the supporting cast that we have. We have dedicated, I mean, diehard dedicated uh, um, volunteers here that's doing this. No funding. Again, since January, we, we you know, starting this up every single week, sometimes twice a week. During the holidays, we traveling throughout some of the highest crime areas, standing up doing, you know, doing these, these, these gas station assistance. You know, so... If, you know, when I t talk about that consistency is key, this is what I'm talking about. We have real strong, dedicated people to their community, um, to the areas and building our board. You know, who better to have a dedicated board than the people that's living this, the people that's breathing it, the people that have to deal with these things day after day, you know, and, and people that are dedicated and looking forward to, to change. So, you know, very important, my man. Very, very important. And to the listeners, you know, to to have this. And you can look look across the city. You, you, you know, even when I started with Comer, you know, uh, I, I did a lot of visits um, throughout the city and seen a lot of lot of structures. And always been one to say that you can't bring a satellite organization into my community and act, and 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 expect them to build my community. Because again, they got eight hours, eight hours here, and they go home. We got 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. We got the rest of our lives in this community. So I think it's better that we build our community than you setting a business up in our community to do it. Well, you can bring a service to our community. You can be a part of our community, but it's up to us to structure our community. Yeah, and speaking of structure, uh, what would you say for those who are looking to replicate operation neighborhood safety because you get a lot of inquiry from around the city and other places um but what would you say in terms of how you guys are going about it what's some things that you feel like you you could have done differently or you learning about that will make this process of duplication easier for the next sam Bingham and the next matt and jennifer like what would you give them advice on I mean, you know, again, when you pick your when you pick your groups, pick some people that's really dedicated to the community. People that's really about community building. People that's really serious about the crime, uh, jobs, resources. That's really serious about it. We all got families to go home to. We all got families, you know, we all got other lives. We all got jobs. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, we, we kick off our shoes and, you know, you lay back and, uh, oh, there, there go again, the shooting's up, you know, it should, but what are you out there doing about it? You know, don't get right. on, uh, you know, I, I'd be so tired of people telling me, oh, I got this organization, I got this, that, and the other. We have really been out there every day and these organizations that the city, the state, government give these fundings to and all that, We've yet to run, we probably ran across four or five within a year's time. And, you know, they're getting funded. And that's the unique thing about us. We're out there every single day and we're not getting funded. We partnership with Third District again. The, the remarkable and amazing officers that are in there. You know, the commander with the lead, you know, with the building up together we can. It all falls off the energy that, that dedicated organizations are out here to do what they have to do to make they safe, uh, make their community 
a better a better safe place to live and shop. No, I definitely uh you know appreciate you sharing that perspective. I want to kind of shift gears and talk about you know just some of the things that we do see within our communities that cause so many people to give up, lose hope. And oftentimes just sit in the corner and complain and, and whine about the very things that they could be doing something about. But like, how do you define hope? Um, I define hope by, by dedication. Keep doing, keep giving back. Um, again, the consistency, you know, um, you know you're doing something right. You, you know you do, you're doing great things in the community. Keep it going, cause people are gonna pick up on it. You know, I, you know I can hear people talk about me all the time, just like they do with anybody else that that's out here doing great and successful things. Even with Dr. Martin Luther King, you get all of it. But at the end of the day, respect. You know, respect and responsibility. I hold on to that for dear life in my heart. Respect and responsibility, but. You know, that, that that gives me hope. And when I see young people, um, you know, and I see what, what what you have built with champs, and I see these young men that that consistently, Saturday mornings, consistent, consist, consistently, 50 or more there on Saturday mornings, to give up their Saturday mornings, and, you know, come to a, a small space just to listen to another man talk. That gives me hope. That gives me that gives me joy. That that helps build me back up. That that travel I got from Portage in there and every day ain't nothing compared to the travel we're having right now to to climb the ladder of success in our communities. And especially black communities. When our young our young black women, our young black men, you know, right now that's being torn down. You know, but again, we do the bubblegum effect. We have what we have with us right now. And if you watch from where we started at with this, and and see where that see where it is right now with champs growing, you know some you know these young men running it. When you talk about, oh yeah, we got these young men doing this, that we have young men that are straight up running it. That was right. straight up off the street. Ain't no script. We don't script this. That's right. They, they they tell you we don't script them to tell you something in front of a camera. These boys' lives have really been out here changing. That's right. You know, we bring the impossible in to see them. And when they get through with them, they all go up with us. How about that? Yeah. And, you know, obviously you've been in the community for a long time, as long as you can remember. Um, what's some of your favorite memories in terms of what you were doing? I heard about the basketball tournaments that were put on through you. Um, I remember you telling me about when Gary Comer himself was really getting everything going in the community, but what are some of your favorite memories that you like to share as an extension of not giving up and still hoping for the future? In this order, in this direct order, uh, Brian Leach, you know, another one of my best, closest friends. I never get through talking about him always and forever. Rest in, rest in soul, Mr. Mr. Brian Leach. Um, was able to bring, you know, back in the day, the young men that I've been in the community uh, over 44 years. I've been in that same community 44 years. And Brian Leach brought things to that community that, you know, our young people at that time would have never, never thought and see. Brian Leach brought some of the, the best college basketball players to our community to play out on that basketball court. He gave me the opportunity to run that basketball tournament. It was called the uh, Bug Factory, basic, basic urban gear. He had a, a, a clothing store on 73rd and College Grove called the Bug Factory. But it was the uh, Bug Factory basketball tournament. And he he brought basketball players over there. Tim Hardaway, Juwan Howard, you know, uh, at the time, you know, R. Kelly. Uh, some of your, your, your top players out here came over there you know, to, to play basketball. The young men right now that are 35 and 40 years old started me out. I had them. And every tournament that I have, every tournament that they come to give back, I started them out as guys helping me take the scoreboard out every day, set it up, do all the positive things over there to, to get them 
to come out and um, had the players come out to the community to play the ball game. Um, after that, um, that was my other greatest moments is when I'm sitting at home uh, on a Saturday morning, I get a knock at my door and from the local school council from, uh, here, I mean, from uh, Paul Revere School. Uh, Sam, come on, come on, we, 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 we need to, uh, we need to, thanks. We need to, uh, you need to come up to the school right quick. Somebody wants to meet you. What do you mean somebody want to meet me? You have to come on. Somebody want to meet you. Okay, all right, all right, here I come. And on the way up there, Gary Coma want to meet you. Who is Gary Coma? I don't know Gary Coma. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, <laughs> right. I'm the thing. I never heard of Gary Coma. Who is Gary Coma? That up in here, and uh, they, the principal, uh, South, no South Oakwood, Brookhaven, Brookhaven neighborhood organization, uh, people from the uh, local school council, everybody in this room talking to this, you know, to this white guy, the old white man up in there. And so I go in there like, you know, how you doing? And he, hey, how you doing? I heard so much about you. You know, I want to do something. And they say, you the man. I'm like, I don't know about all that. What what you mean by you the man? You know, yeah. So, you know, as you know, uh, I, I'm very well off, you know, uh, I got, I can make things happen. So, you know, uh, I've done a lot for Power Revere School, so I want to come into the community. So, uh, okay, so what they had to do with me? Well, they tell me that if anybody can get to every, in, everybody in this neighborhood, it's you. You know, oh, I'm very honored to all y'all that's out here, you know, to say that. And, uh, you know, that was another one of my, my greatest moments right there. And from there, we built that partnership, you know, um, uh, with me and in in the uh, Gary Comer Foundation, you know, and we went on to plan everything that's going on in that community even to this day. My dedication, my heart goes to this man. This is the most respected man, I, man I have ever met in my doggone life. Here you are. You have a billionaire. We're not talking millionaire. Right. I can't even go. I can't even go to some of these NBA players, kicking with them or nothing without security knocking me down. Doing all this and all that. Here it is. He he rolled up his sleeve, rolled you know, put his leg up on the chair, and got down as as a human being, not as this this great God that nobody can touch. Drove his own car, you know. Walked through the neighborhoods, you know. wasn't scared of anything. That's real. When you see that, that's real. At that man's caliber, that's real right there. So that was another one of my, my, my greatest moments. The next one is after that, they built the high school, went through all these things, trying to get things right in the communities, you know, trying to get these young people involved, you know, not only young men, but young women, parents, everybody trying to get them involved. One day they hired this young man uh, at Gary Comer, Gary Comer uh, College Prep. They hired this young man by the name of Vondell Singh. How about that? Man, we need to clean this neighborhood up, man. We need to get these boys, man. We need to get our young men. I agree because, you know, during that time, I was, me and Pastor Wright, that was another one of my moments. Me and Pastor Wright had started out the Ring of Hope boxing program. Mm -hmm. Well, again, we would, we would in the morning times, pick these young men up, uh, have them before 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, they would meet at my house every day uh, during the school time. We would take time out at 10 o'clock in the morning, go check on them in classes, gave our dedication, pick them up at 2.30, took them over to the boxing ring where we had some ex-pro boxers that was out there, some men of the community out there, help round and shape these boys off. Again, I had to, you know, during those times, I had rent to pay, I had house note, I had bills, so I had to find me a job. It fell off, so, um, you know, again, came along a few years later when I met this man right here, Mr. Vondell Singleton. We set up in that, we set up in his office. We set up in his office and we were talking about the needs of the, of the community. We were talking about what is it that we can do? What is it we can create? What is it, man, you know, let's do this. We always talked about community schools collaboration. So I'm like, I'm the community and he the school. What better collaboration than to have somebody from the community, somebody from the school to come together and build a, build on the community. 
Right. And we had these conversations days after days on building again. We went to everybody. We went to everybody. These are my greatest moments I'm talking about. We went to everybody. You talk, oh, believe in us, do this, that, and the other. Nobody wanted to hear us. Nobody wanted to do nothing for us. They give us a few scraps here and there. I think the the, the, the thing was that, you know what, Von Hell? Let's make a brand. Let's stop following up behind these people. Let's stop going to these people. Let's make us a brand so they can come to us. I think that's what, what's going to be important here. We can't tell them about it. We got to show them, you know. So we built all of the quality. And this man right here stayed on when the rest of us had to go. Vondell stayed on, believed in what he believed in, believed in what his vision was. Always say the success, the success of any organization is the four corners. That's the visionary, the logical thinker, the fierce fighter, and the friendly helper. That's what you got to build any organization. Again, the visionary, the logical thinker, the fierce fighters, and the friendly helper. And you can have a successful organization across the board anytime. Put those people in their strengths. Put them in their strengths and build your organization from there. But those are the greatest moments I have had. Meeting you, meeting Coma, and being able to be a part of Brian Leach's vision and, and legend that he had built in that community. Man, powerful. Thank you for sharing Very those. Yeah. And, you know, we, we definitely salute you for, again, being the common denominator in all of this, right? Like you can't mention Gary Comer without mentioning Sam Binion. You can't mention yeah. Brian Leach without mentioning Sam Binion. You can't mention Vondell Singleton and Champs without mentioning Sam Binion. You get it? Yeah. So again, the consistency in being there in the community through the ups, the downs, the changes, people leaving, some people coming. Um, but our mission and focus is there. We want to help mm -hmm. our community be better. We want to help our families become stronger. Uh, we want to make sure that our communities feel safe and engaged. Uh, so we won't stop doing this. Um, we won't. As a matter of fact, we're about to pick the pace up. But I do have a quick question. Um, and I ask all of the guests that I have on the Born to Win podcast uh, this very question. If you had the opportunity to create your own billboard where millions or billions of people would read your words, what words would you write on your billboard and why? <laughs> Consistency is key. Mm. Consistency, Consistency is key. Is key. Yep. Yes, sir. That's what that's to be that. Consistency. Consistency. If I look up key. and see that, and I'm looking at that, that's gonna that's gonna churn my mind right there. No matter if I heard it or not. But it, if I sit there and look and have my day, I've been down. I don't luck. Nope. Nothing. And nothing's going my way. Like that old saying: If first you don't succeed, try and try again. Consistency is key. Love it. Yep. Love it. Love it. Love it. And so, uh, again, uh, I just want to acknowledge, take the time to say that we have some phenomenal people in our world doing amazing work and amazing things. Um, but I'm going to just kind of pitch it off to Sam. How can potential funders, donors, supporters um, support the work of Operation Neighborhood Safety? You know what? Again, we're dedicated. We're out there, you all. We're out there every single week. We come where you are. You know, have a very dedicated team to help, to help with resources in your community, um, to help with uh, whatever it is that you want to build support system or whatever. We have our new, we have our new web address, uh, OperationNeighborhoodSafety.com. You can go to. Um, we're building on that right now. You know, as we speak, we have our Operation Neighborhood Safety Facebook page. You can go on there and see all the pictures that we, you know, we've been doing. You know, we have more to come. But again, when I say we have more to come, look out for us. You know, don't worry. You know, you ain't gonna roll. You, you're gonna get rolled over if you don't roll with us. We, Love we're it. here. Yep. If you don't, you know, changes are coming. And we want to be a solid. I've been here, been there before with, you know, you know, it's fortunate that I was with Mr. Comer doing it, you know, and he had a lot of resources. But I watched communities around us that didn't have Mr. Comer over there 
fault because they didn't have that resource. Right. But now, if we don't have it, let's build us something solid here in this community, in our communities, so that we can have it. We can depend on each other. We don't have to depend on somebody with a, a whole nother venue coming into our community. Right. To build it up. Let's build our own. Let's buy from. Let's buy black. Let's buy from our own. Let's invest back into our community. You know, don't knock your neighbor, support your neighbor. There you go. There you go. And so I just want to thank you, uh, Sam, for joining the Born to Win podcast. We're going to have some other members of Operation Neighborhood Safety also join the podcast to continue to get this word out that we are working yeah. in the vineyard. And again, we don't know uh, who's going to watch this or listen to it, but we do want you to know you can park your resources with us. You can trust us that we're going to do exactly what we said we're going to do. And again, I just want to thank everybody for joining the Born to Win podcast with our very special guest, Sam Binion. Make sure you share this message, share the link, and support the great work of Operation Neighborhood Safety. Until next time, remember, you're born to win in every situation in life. The Born to Win podcast highlights individuals excelling at high levels in their purpose and calling. This podcast is for anyone looking to get ahead in life and willing to take action and reach their full potential. Using Champ's male mentoring model of the three E's, education, empowerment, and exposure, it means you too are born to win. I'm born to win. Live. The Champs from Chicago be screaming all that. You are now tuned in to the Born to Win podcast. Champion.